Never fear, Alvin's here. You're watching TJV. Suddenly we're going into this gray fog. It almost looks like smoke. Doesn't smell like smoke though. I closed my windows and uh, set my air to recirculate for now. I don't think it's smoke. Let's try to keep it out of my cab if it is. It's so weird. It's just suddenly like a wall of cloud. Like here we're clear again. But up ahead there, you see it? Maybe the camera's not picking it up, not doing it justice. I don't know. Cameras don't always uh, pick up the fog as well. Have you guys ever noticed that? That cameras can see through the fog better than we can. You see those trees, they're sort of just popping out of the cloud there? Interesting. I guess, I, I guess it's just fog. Now that we're here, it just looks like fog. But from back there, it was so weird. I had a clear blue sky and then suddenly just like a, a gray wall coming up in front of me. Interesting. Well, good morning, everybody. I haven't even said good morning to you yet. It is uh, today. What is today? I'm filming this on a Thursday, uh, and we're on our way up to Fort McMurray. We left Saskatoon this morning. We, we've only gone about a half hour down the road. And uh, so we're in Saskatchewan, still between Saskatoon and North Battleford. Hey, Diesel! Diesel, look, cows! Cows, Diesel! Look at your big dogs, man. Big, funny looking dogs. Diesel loves cows. They're his favorite. And horses. I think cows are his favorite. I like cows too, they taste great. But anyway, yeah, we're on our way up to, we'll be in Fort McMurray tonight. Got about 800 kilometers or 500 miles to go. We're just rolling into the town named after the saint. That was named Paul. St. Paul, Alberta. About halfway there from where we started this morning. Long way up to Fort McMurray. Yeah, St. Paul is still pretty southern. Oh, I guess middle middle Alberta. I guess we're the same level as Edmonton almost, a little further. But uh, another four and a half hours of just driving at least, maybe five depending on I was going to say traffic, but I'm not expecting any traffic up there. Maybe depending on wildlife, we might see a bunch of bison herds or caribou. I don't know. We'll see. I'm pretty sure they're further north this time of year. But I'm not too sure of their migration habits. There are massive herds of wild animals up north. People think they don't exist anymore. I've heard some documentaries saying, oh, nothing like that exists anymore. Obviously, they've never been to northern Canada. <laughs> I've seen them, the huge bison herds. Remember when we up, went up north of BC? Or northern BC and uh, Yukon. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of bison. And they, they just sleep along the side of the road, right? It's actually kind of dangerous because they're massive beasts. There's huge herds of them. You gotta be very careful when you drive up there. pretty neat to see, but they don't really come far south anymore because, you know, we're all down here. Now I'm guessing this church on the left would be St. Paul's Church. That would make sense to me anyway. Oh, it looks like school's just getting out. Uh-oh. Be extra careful going past the school here. All the school kids are in front here. Can't see any name on that church. Are you crossing? You're not crossing? You're just standing there hanging out? Okay. I'm just gonna put on past then. This is a very nice little town, as most towns are in Alberta. 
we have to turn right up ahead uh, and start heading north. Right now we're headed pretty much straight west. Okay, people are opening their doors into traffic. All right. Step right on out of your vehicle, right in front of a semi. Go ahead. That was a cop, and he's not going to do nothing about it. People don't care. People don't care. Okay. It's just like in Steinbeck, you know? People don't even look. They just swing their door open and step out into traffic. Just about nailed people so many times doing that. And then they look at you like it's your fault. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Can you do these street lights, eh? Unique. That's pretty neat. I like it when towns go like the extra mile to be a little different, be a little unique and special. Even if it's just special lamp posts like that. Well, we're on Highway 63 now. This is the highway that takes us up to Fort McMurray. We've got about two and a half hours to go. Last time we were up here, this was all still, uh, all green. It was still summertime then. Now fall has really set in quick. Still tons of beaver dams and, you know, beaver dens. Every, every creek and lake and pond seems to have beavers in it here. Just thousands and thousands and thousands of them everywhere. Another one over there. Every little pond has a big, beaver den in it and every little creek that we pass over same thing as the last time that we saw it but now that we're up here uh, in the fall time it's you know we don't get all the beautiful colors that ontario gets all the reds and oranges out here it's mostly just like this just yellow and brown kind of ugly colors but it, it is fall time uh, most of the trees have lost their leaves already this far north it's, the days are getting pretty short But I love it up here. It's so peaceful, so uninhabited, Just so wide open. Just rolling into Fort McMurray. I gotta deliver these things just down the street from the Petropass truck stop. Turn left on McKenzie Boulevard. It actually works out perfect, so I'll be able to stay right close by. I'm gonna go see where the customer is first. Just drive past there. Do a little drive-by surveillance, you know, some recon. Figure out where I'll be delivering in the morning. This is sort of their industrial zone here in Fort McMurray. I believe it's at the lights here, right? T town seems pretty quiet right now. 300 meters, turn left on Mackenzie Boulevard. Huh? Mackenzie, eh? All right. I'm ready for sleep already too. It's been a long day again, and we're way up north. Right. 
So we'll go see where we gotta be in the morning and uh, hopefully there'll, there'll be a spot for us at the truck stop. It's like I have a signal on, I can't tell. Now he put it on, okay. I have to check Google Maps to where exactly the truck stop is. I know it's really close by here. In 500 meters, turn left on McDonald Crescent and then approaching destination on the right side in 180 meters. All right, Karen, I trust you. Too bad they're not there now. We could just unload now. It's a quarter to nine here. We're in mountain time. So we're one hour behind Manitoba, back at home. In 200 meters, turn left on McDonald Crescent and then approaching destination on the right side in 180 meters. All right, Karen. You already told me that, but thanks. Now you're dinging at me. I heard you. I heard you. I'm listening. On Mackenzie King Road. Karen's taking me to the truck stop now. If there's no parking there, there's plenty of parking on the street here, just down the street from where I got to deliver, so... At least we have that for an option. Yeah, I'd almost rather park here, right close by. But now, whatever. We'll go see how the Petro Pass looks. It's not too far down the road here. The left side, in 150 meters. Should be just around the corner. Oh, we already got trucks parking on the road here, so that might mean that uh, the actual truck stop is full. We'll see. Never know. It's not a very big truck stop, that's the thing. I think this is the driveway right here, right? You have arrived at your destination on the left side. Petro Pass number 38,702. Petro Pass number 38,702. Wow, I didn't know there was that many Petro Passes. <laughs> what is this guy doing? Oh, well, dude, use your signals. Oh, your front signal's not working. Okay. Probably get that fixed, man. I had no idea what you were doing. Yeah, it looks like we'll be parking on the street. That's okay, whatever. Let's do, let's do a pass through here. See what she looks like. Tons of pumps. What do they got? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pumps or so. Like, look at this. Let's pan this way a little bit for you. Nice. It's nuts. Don't think there's much for parking here though. Unless if there's parking like way in the back, but these guys are all parked blocking the driveway. Dude, why wouldn't you just park on the street if there's no room like I'm going to do? Oh yeah, this is right packed. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're gonna go to the street. Yeah. That bothers me. In Canada, you get that a lot. When the, when the parking lot gets full, people don't go to the next stop or park somewhere else. They just park right in the driveway. Like literally right in the driveway and block everybody from getting in and out. That's okay, whatever. I wanna go park on the street anyway, it'll be quieter there. All these guys are all gonna start up in the morning. And a lot of these guys are local drivers too, you know? Like don't they have yards, like work yards where they can park their machines? Like they're taking up spots from us highway drivers that have, you know, nowhere else to park. Nah, yeah, like I said, whatever. I wanna park on the street anyway. Oh, speed bumps. Oh, oh, oh. I bet you they do have trucks just ripping through here. You know, every truck stop should put these speed bumps in. I know they're annoying and we'd hate them, but they'd really uh, get drivers, like these these NASCAR drivers, to slow down. Well, this is where we found parking. That light is a little bit annoying. There we go. We made it. All the way up from Berlin, Wisconsin. Two and a half day drive. Ready to unload in the morning. Never fear, Alvin's here. You're watching TJV.